So um, oncolytic viruses offer, I think, a real benefit um, for treatment because you can inject an individual tumor and you do not need to define a priori what antigens are present in that tumor. So the oncolytic virus will induce a very strong immune response, largely built on the response to the viral components, but then you'll see antigen spreading to tumor antigens. Um, and so it, it, it continues to be uh, you know, very exciting as an adjunct to immunotherapy. I think in the early days of development of oncolytic viruses, we were looking for that direct killing by the virus of the tumor cells, but we now understand that it probably is, is more important to get that immune response so that you can see rejection of uninjected lesions, what we call an apscopal effect. Um, I think the promise for oncolytic viruses remains in combination therapies. Uh, so in situations where T cells are, are not present at the tumor, this is a, these are the, the types of cancers that are not amenable to immunotherapy right now and nothing can get a T cell response uh, better than a virus. And so I think the, the idea of using the oncolytic virus to turn these uh, T cell poor tumors into T cell rich environments and then add additional immunotherapies is, is, is you know, very promising. Um, I think we're gonna have to figure out the right patient indications and figure out the right study designs to demonstrate this because I think that has been a challenge given the, you know, how these viruses actually work. Um, but I suspect that we're going to see more studies. And in, in fact, at the SITSI meeting this year, we see a lot of uh, uh, presentations that are around oncolytic viruses plus checkpoint blockade.